Fuck it, eh? Flat Earth, Ozzy Rusk. Oh, hang on. Iron Horse here. Um, just thought I'd give a little update because I haven't done one in a while. Just sitting out here under my tarp. This is actually the most peaceful it's been in weeks and weeks and weeks. It's been blowing its bloody guts out. And because I'm not paying attention, I just already spilt the first one. I've already done a couple of boxes, so it's all good. So, um, what I thought would be more interesting than anything else to talk about, because we know the Earth is flat, so, so what would be more curious as a interesting topic to me is to discuss, um, the nature of sanity. Because, yeah, of course, being a flat earther, my sanity gets brought into question regularly, in fact, daily. And I'd like to thank all the contributors who have actually helped me on my path, because it's actually helped me realise that I actually am genuinely insane. It, it has taken me quite some years to realise this, and uh, well, it's helpful to know. I'm I'm still the one of those ones of the opinion that there's probably absolutely sweet fuck all that can be done about it because you know, like, well, what are you gonna do? Surgery, medication. Like most of these medications for the insane people, they're basically, the way I like to think of it, is they're stiflers. So they're stifling the ability to think insane things. So, you know, it's not a placebo. It's nothing like that. It's actually, uh, it's a uh, suppressant. There, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for, suppressant. It suppresses the symptoms of the situation, which therefore makes the situation no longer exist. That's modern medicine in a nutshell for you, isn't it? Suppress the symptoms, you no longer have a situation. You've got a broken bone, never mind. We'll give you some painkillers for that. And you no longer have a broken bone. That's the similar sort of vein is what I'm thinking of, you know. Obviously, of course, we don't because at least we know that doctors are good for one thing and probably one thing only, and that is mending broken bones. And even then, I think they do a pretty screw-up job because they like to put um, screws and shit through people's bones and think, oh, that's going to help. You know, back in the day, we just used plaster. But we're not back in the day anymore, are we? We're here in 2022. We're living in the modern age. And I'm still bottling beer as my ancestors did. And, yeah, if I have a... Drink. That is going to upset my phone, so what I'll do is just plug the charger. Because who needs charge anyway? <laughs> They're getting charged by the sun. <laughs> How good is that? Absolute cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, it's good to be me. So anyway, that won't fit there anymore because space constraints. Um, so the thing I'm getting down to the nitty gritty while I'm just 
you know, bottling some water that's been sanitized by the fermentation process of alcohol with a bit of flavor from wheat and hops and whatnot. Is that I am generally regarded across nearly every forum I come across, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, Quora, and I do prefer Quora, that's the, with the Q-U-O-R-A, I prefer that actually as my favourite um, internet news outlet, because I think that Yeah, you know, we're told that we need to publish papers to have them peer reviewed so that they can be certified as new science. Not the story I was well going to go into, but it's kind of relevant. Is that the fact is that it doesn't matter where we communicate with one another, our communication abilities are kind of judged by one another and our intelligence is judged by one another as to how how much we agree how much we agree with their opinions and if we don't agree with their opinions then we're insane However, if we agree with the, let me just twist that a little bit. If we agree with the sanctified, certified, already accepted majority opinion, which you only get from peer review, so if everybody agrees with what you say, then you're right. But if you throw a spanner in the works and they don't agree with you, then you are automatically wrong and potentially insane. That's the way science works. Science... Don't give. Yeah, no, I, ne I nearly went somewhere I wasn't going to go. I need to have another sip of the future while it's still in the past. Radio. What's really going down is that people who express opinions about another person, like obviously now I'm expressing opinions about other people, so that's another catch 22, but I'm born on the 22nd, so I can catch 22 all the time. Is that, um, those who are more opinionated about my opinions that I do express on Quora than others are generally not actually expressing an opinion. What they are doing is that they are... Um, projecting. What they're doing is seeing something inside themselves that they've already heard. You know, you, you can hear new information all the time and, you know, you know, the Raiders beat the Broncos 26 to 19 or something. And that's fine. It doesn't mean shit. It's acceptable information. But when you hear something new information, like, for example... Well, water cannot curve around a curving surface. It has to remain flat and level and retained by higher walls. Well, that sort of thing starts to 
upset their minds. It upsets their preconceived beliefs because we're told we live on a spinning ball hurtling through a vacuum of space. Let me just cap this one because if I don't cap it soon enough, a bug will land in it. And I've got enough protein. So, so what they're basically... doing is they're projecting their own insecurities about their own beliefs because it doesn't really matter what you believe you can believe we live on a spinning ball in outer space you can believe we live on a flat and stationary earth that doesn't move at all exactly like we observe you can believe that the atmosphere moves at these impressive speeds of you know it's only it's not just 1.35 mac for the spin, you know, which is 1,040 miles an hour, it's an 86.8 Mach of rotating around the Earth. Give or take the time of year. Sometimes it's 88, sometimes it's less. But, you know, it's, it's basically in the vicinity of 87. But we're also told that the sun, you know, that thing just gently lighting up my face right now, occasionally... It's just going to be behind some clouds. It's um, it's moving at six hundred and seventy mac, and one mac is one speed of sound, and one speed of sound is seven hundred and sixty-seven miles per hour. And most people just they can't grasp this sort of stuff, and so as a result. As a result, they tell me that I'm the one who cannot grasp these unfathomable, unfathomable, <laughs> that's a good word, isn't it? Unfathomable figures. I can't grasp these unfathomable figures because I'm insane. But when you ask these sane people, okay, then, well, how fast is the ground between, beneath your feet moving? They haven't got a fucking clue. When you ask them, well, how fast is the Earth moving around the sun? Mm, I don't know. It's, it's one rotation per day, and it's 24 hours to do it. And it takes a whole year to go around at once. It's nothing. That's that's the attitude that they genuinely have because they are the ones lacking in cognizance of reality. When you recognise reality, you can no longer be bamboozled by the lie. Oh, yeah. Gee. Hang on. Let me get out my calculator and my little... That thing is moving... Half a million miles an hour. This thing, oh, it's just spinning 1,040 miles per hour. But it's chasing that thing. Wait a second. Oh, no. It's, it's chasing it at 66,600 miles per hour. Well, that's the speed it goes around it, sorry. But if it's also chasing it, and it's going 514,000 miles per hour. Hello? 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 Anybody? Anybody? I tried to break it down for somebody on Cora just recently. I said, let's assume, all right, let's assume we have a, a child or 
you know, a person on a bicycle in a car park, and there's a car parked in the car park. Very simple, straightforward, easy to un understand stuff. The car is parked in the car park. The person on the bicycle rides around the car. He has what, five, six, seven miles per hour, whatever. Let's say he just goes eight miles per hour. It's pretty fast. But he can ride around and around this car all day long. Now let's say that this car, well, somebody that owns it, so it's getting a bit dark here now. Sun's going around the clouds. Um, let's say this card, car, <laughs> here's a bit of a card. Driver hops in the car, and because he can see that there's this idiot, obviously, because why would you be driving around around a car all day on your bike? That's okay, we're going to know where that came from. Um, let's just say that we had another idiot. <laughs> what the heck? Houston, we have a problem. The eagle has landed. Let's just say the car takes off at a, at a slow crawl of five miles per hour. I think I might even stop bottling this for a second. Just black helicopters all around the place, man. They're, they're, they're onto me. So this non-binary potentially human person riding on a bike I'm just going to say you know a young kid like a little boy but I'm not even sure if you're allowed to say that anymore anyway he's right he or she or it or they are uh, Riding around the car, going eight miles per hour, and the car now suddenly starts to move at five miles per hour. Now, although you can keep a constant eight mile per hour rotation around a stationary car, as soon as it starts moving at five miles per hour, you now are moving a lot faster you're doing the 8 plus 5 13 but you also want to go extra to get around in front of the car because you have to then cross around in front of the car to then come around behind it and brake to decelerate so that you can then start accelerating back around again so now this is a major, major, major problem for the heliocentric model because they tell us that when our moon is just gently wafting around us, our spinning space ball is actually going a little bit more than just five miles per hour. Now let us then have another look at this person on the bicycle oh, cyclist <laughs> that's yeah that's a happy word <laughs> let's have a look at now this cyclist going around the car and he's going around the car at five miles per hour he's speeding up quite a bit to go around in front and come back around let's now say that this car speeds up to 60 miles per hour holy shuck and fit this poor little fella now, I mean, poor little non-binary human embodiment of a creature, cyclist, he might now want to be on a motorbike so that 
it can <laughs> maintain a constant distance from this previously parked motor car without appearing to move further away at, at any period of time. Now, I'm sure that most of you are looking at me like I am fucking retarded, which is apparently I am. I've been told it multiple times, and I think that the, um, the little tap on the head the other day from a bolt of lightning, which was crucifying me until yesterday, but today I feel a little bit better, so that's why I'm making a video. A little bit better, not a lot. I'm 50% better. I've still got this major, major concussion on the top of my head. Never been on the head by a bolt of lightning. It's not pleasant. But I'm not called Iron Horse for nothing. making a video. It's all right. We're on the ad break. So anyway, so now is this cyclist. Now he's become a motorcyclist orbiting the car going at 60 miles per hour. If you've ever been on a freeway or a highway at 60 miles per hour, you know, that's, uh, that's a little bit tricky. It takes a lot of skill, you know. Pull around behind, put on the brakes, go around again, put the gas on, you know. You, you, if, if you're going to try and keep up with something at 60 miles per hour, you're doing a really good job. you got skills. But what they tell us, is that the moon wafting around us is doing that at free fall speed as the earth is gently wafting around the sun pardon me I nearly um, lost my lunch 66,600 miles per hour so, the cyclist going around the car at five miles per hour, he can do that, accelerating, decelerating, braking, and all that. But all of a sudden now, this car has shut off. Or down. You know, there's, there's no up or down in space. Just out shot out at about a thousand miles per hour in at this scale so this young we, we won't age discriminate could be old could be of a relative age this relatively aged cyclist has now maintained this beautiful speed around the car just going five miles per hour but it shot up into the air at 500 miles per hour and it has no problem being in free fall of maintaining the same distance from it the whole time. This is the mentality of a heliocentrist. Heliocentrists have no idea what their actual belief is. Oh, we just revolve around the sun and we can see the sun set. Look at it set. That proves we live on a spinning ball. We can prove 
we do not live on a spinning ball because of a sunset. It's something we can easily test. In this day and age, you know, we're not living in your ancient superstitious, heliocentric, sun-worshipping, cult belief, religious belief anymore. We live in the modern age. It's 2022. And we have digital cameras. We can send them up high. We have drones. We can send up a drone. So when you think that you have seen that son of God, as you believe it to be because you're a heliocentrist, it's a religious belief, when you see that go below your horizon three or four or less, in most cases, miles away, Sometimes it might be more. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. I will say, okay, it's 20 miles away. I will say it's 200 miles away. When we sell, send a drone up and you see the sunset and the drone goes up and you see the sun again, that means that that sun has not disappeared below your horizon your horizon is an optical illusion it has to be an optical illusion think about it think if your ball is 25,000 miles wide then that means that 12,500 miles either side of your point of view has to be daytime because it, once it goes over that it's night so how the blasphemy can you think that the sun has set below the horizon when it's only 3 or 4 or 10 or 20 or 200 miles away it's 6,200 miles away either side of you now, if that's the amount of curvature that the sun can light up every day, how can you see it? How can you see it within your tiny little window of three miles or 20 miles? You can't see 20 miles. Don't, don't shit on me. I can see like bloody 200 metres. The sun is setting over there. 150 metres. How can I be getting daylight if the sun is 12 and a half or sorry, 6,250 miles below the curvature? That's where it must be to give you a sunset. How can we have a sunset three miles away, six? thousand miles away do any of you ever really think about that if your horizon is near which it is it always is because it's a matter of perspective then you cannot have a sun setting beneath it 6,000 miles away. But you know how you can have it happen? How it can is if the Earth is flat. Because if the Earth is flat, which it is, then obviously by the time the Sun is 6,000 miles away, then your convergence point of three miles away. I was generous before, but fuck, mine's only like 150 metres away and it's still setting. I'll give you 200 miles. I'll give you 
however many you want. However many you want. If the sun is setting that many miles away, because it's 93 million miles away, then why is it setting 150 metres away? And I've had daylight for well and truly above 50% of the day. Holy shit. I nearly dropped my bloody butler. All right. Time for this flat over to bottle some more frickin' beer because it doesn't bottle itself. Take it easy. If you have any questions about things you don't understand about the flat earth, I can and maybe will answer it if you're not. A complete freaking moron. You can find me under my normal name on Cora. Cora. I prefer to do it on Cora because in YouTube you can't put um, informational pictographs, as I like to call them. Some people call them memes. Find me on Cora. Ross. Iron, horse, thatcher, and I will, I will, because this is what I was born to do, I will prove to you the earth is flat, and you're welcome, cheers.